Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video I want to talk about what I believe to be the coolest mini guitar ever. I'm talking about the original travel guitar, the Chiquita. Now if you were playing guitar in the 80s, you probably remember these little guys, or maybe you've seen it memorialized in one of two well-known films. The first being Back to the Future, which came out in 1985. It's in the opening scene where the main character, Marty McFly, heads over to wacky scientist uh, Doc's house plugs the Chiquita into this homemade amplification system, cranks everything up, hits a chord, and gets thrown across the room. It's a classic scene. But a year before that, 1984, it was featured in This Is Spinal Tap. It's the scene where the band are in those cocoons on stage, and lead guitar player Nigel Tufnell comes out holding one, and then plays it during the song uh, Rock and Roll Creation. But the connections become even cooler than that if we go back to the origins, origins of the guitar. You see, it was the Reverend G, I'm talking about Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, that originally went to guitar builder Mark Irwin down in Texas and told him that he wanted a, a guitar that he could fit into the overhead bin on an airplane and you know within FAA and airline rules. And subsequently he had some input into the, the design and the Chiquita was born. Now here's a couple of photos of Billy from that era holding a Chiquita, but this is my favorite photo of all of them. This is Billy with Eddie Van Halen holding onto a Chiquita. And it was actually Eddie's use of a mini guitar on the track Little Guitars that inspired me to want to get a mini guitar to begin with. <laughs> Okay, now let's talk about the specs on these guitars. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about buying mini or travel guitars in general and give you some advice. Uh, but first of all, we've got a mahogany neck through body. Uh, according to the website, it's about 4.25 pounds. That's about what mine came in at. But I've noticed that sometimes people have them listed used on reverb for even under four pounds. So I would consider, you know, just think about it as four pounds plus or minus, you know, a few ounces. Now you're probably gonna have a little bit of neck dive. And mine has um, maybe even a little more neck dive than you normally would because of the tuners that I upgraded to, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so what I've been doing uh, to counter the weight is I just take a diver's weight like this and I kind of loop it through the belt over here. I'm not doing that right now, but I'm showing you. And when I do, it very well stabilizes. I use a little two pound diver's weight. And I know a lot of people um, are opposed to these because they're filled with lead. Uh, it does have a vinyl coating on it that you really have to, to tear at to get through. So um, if you're worried about lead, um, you know, keep that in mind, but that's what I use. The length of the guitar is 27 and a half inches. And so compare that to a Strat, which is about 38. So it's about a foot shorter than a Strat. Here's a photo of, uh, of my Chiquita next to one of my Strat style guitars. You can see the difference there. Now the other measurement that is really important and I'd say more important than the overall length is the scale length. Now if you're not familiar with that, most people will define it as the distance between the bridge and the nut, but more technically it's the distance between the bridge and the middle of the you know 12th fret and then times two. Okay, that's the more formal definition. Um, again, it's 19 inches. Compare that to Strat style guitars, which are 25 and a half inches, or Les Paul style guitars, which are 24 and three quarter inches. And you can see it is quite shorter. And why is that important? Well, a couple reasons. When you have a shorter scale, it's gonna mean less tension on the strings. And also because you're working with a, a smaller space and you're cramming all those frets in there, the frets are gonna be closer together. And when the frets are closer together, your fingers are closer together. So it, it can be really challenging for people, especially with really big hands, to play shorter scale guitars. I do not have big hands, and, and when I get up here above the 12th fret position, I can certainly feel my fingers getting super cramped, but I'm more than fine when I play this guitar to spend most of my time below the 15th fret. That doesn't bother me at all. For some people it might, so you wanna keep that in mind. Now, not all travel or mini guitars are made the same. And so what I did here is I went out to the Guitar Center and Sweetwater websites, and I found a dozen guitars that were marketed as either a travel or mini guitar. And here are the scale lengths involved. You can see at the very bottom, there's a Vox SDC1 with a scale length of 18.7 inches, so just short of the uh, Chiquita. And then all the way at the top, you have 
the um, Travelcaster from Traveler Guitars at 25 and a half inches. And actually, Traveler makes quite a few uh, travel guitars at that 25 and a half inch scale length. So you can see there's quite a variance. So if you're looking for a travel guitar where the neck feels more like a regular guitar, you're going to want one in that 24 to 3 quarter to 25 and a half inch scale length region. Okay, if that's important to you. Now for me, I really wasn't looking for um, a standard scale length. I wanted a shorter scale length because I was going for the Van Halen approach to using these to using a mini guitar. Okay, which is totally different. So Van Halen would tune his strings up so they were at a higher pitch. I tune mine very similar to the way Van Halen did, and every string is tuned up the equivalent of uh, three frets. So the E strings are now G, the A is now C, and the D is now F, etc. So if I play what looks like an E chord, it's actually now a G chord. An A chord is now a C chord, a D chord is now an F chord. And that raised pitch approach, to me, that's the fun way to use these guitars. I don't travel enough for work to warrant bringing a guitar, a guitar with me, and surely if I brought a guitar on vacation with me, uh, my wife would not be too happy. So for me, it was more about having that little mini guitar experience where everything is tuned up. Now, you can, again, you can treat these either way. If you want to tune it to standard tuning, um, the recommendation, and Mark Irwin has it stamped on the back of the headstock is 13 through 56 gauge strings. And you might be thinking, whoa, wait a second, dude. 13 gauge strings are pretty monstrous. That's like Stevie Ray Vaughan territory. But with that shorter scale, because there's less tension, when you put 13s on it, it doesn't feel like 13s. It probably feels more like 10s or, or something in that region. Um, now, when you tune it up, like I do, that affords you the ability to use um, lighter strings than 13. And so um, I'm using 11s. And I actually work, uh, reached out to Mark Irwin and told him what my plan was. And he said, oh, my recommendation is, you know, do it with 11s. I was going to use 10s like I used to use on my mini Lotus uh, single cut, but he said 11s. And they don't feel like 11s. I mean, they, to me, it's almost like, it feels like 9s or, or somewhere in that region. So again, don't let the string gauge recommendation scare you from getting one of these. All right, now for the rest of the specs. So I didn't call this out earlier, but the body and the neck and the headstock are bound. And um, we've got a kind of a tunematic style little bridge here that uh, you can certainly intonate and, and adjust, fortunately. Now for the pickup, um, I'm not sure where Mark sources these, but uh, he describes it on his website as a classic 59 style humbucker. Um, I, I, that kind of implies more of a vintage kind of tone. I'd say it's more moderate, um, in my opinion, when I compare it to some others. And uh, I think it sounds really good. It's got a nice, punchy, crisp tone. And um, when I compare it to, you know, the tone of the little Lotus that I had before, it's like, uh, it's quite a bit better. Now, the Lotus had two pickups. It's a little more versatile. So that's one downside to this. Is it's just got the one humbucker and a volume knob, although there was a time where um, some were built with a single coil in the neck position. Um, I think that was back during the Hondo days. There was a period from, I think, 81 to 85 when Hondo was producing and distributing these. Um, and they were using a super distortion, I think, in at that point in time. I've seen quite a few with a super distortion pickup, but I really like this this pickup. I think it sounds great within the context of, uh, of this guitar. And then the fingerboard is Laurel, and it's got 23 frets which is odd both literally and figuratively. Um, you know, most guitars, right, are 21, 22, 24. Um, and so to have 23 is kind of odd, but you're not gonna spend a lot of time up there. So I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't get too hung up on that. Now, the, the tuners that it came with, and I, I did change these tuners out, have a 16 to one uh, tuning ratio. And anytime you have a mini guitar, short scale guitar, you want as high of a, of a, um, a, a tuning ratio as possible. So it takes more winds to make a revolution, so it's easier to fine tune. So what I did is I upgraded from uh, 16 to one ratio to 18 to one, and I got locking tuners. Now again, the locking tuners, they, they add a tiny bit more weight, um, not, a, not a ton, but that's one thing to keep in mind because you've already got you know, the neck dive that, that I mentioned, uh, mentioned earlier. Now, if you want to buy one of these little guys, um, Mark does sell them in yellow, red, and natural. Um, he does have a waiting time. I found mine used on, um, on Reverb for a really good price, so I snatched it up uh, 
pretty quickly when I saw it. Um, so occasionally, again, you'll find them used on reverb. If you're gonna find one on reverb, I recommend you, you get one that um, was built by Mark and not one of the Hondo versions. It's just gonna be a, a little bit better quality. Um, although, if you can find one with the single coil in the neck, that might be worthwhile getting one of those um, because uh, that's pretty cool. I, I, if that, I was gonna make one modification to this guitar, uh, it would probably be to add a single coil in the, in the neck position. Now, historically, the Chiquitas have come in either a hard shell case or a gig bag. Uh, mine came with the case, and here's what it looks like next to a uh, normal size Strat case. Now, there was a time when the Chiquitas would ship with a little battery-powered amp. Here's a photo of that. Um, I believe it has a two-inch speaker, if I remember correctly. It's, it's, again, it's battery-powered. It probably doesn't sound that great. I've never actually played through one myself. I'd love to get my hands on one just from a collector standpoint. Um, but you may end up, if you're looking for a used one, you may actually find one with one. All right, now I'm going to play just a little bit more for you here so you can hear it in action. Uh, a little bit of clean, a little bit of crunch, a little bit of lead. And I am running it through my Line 6 Helix processor. That was my video on the Chiquita Travel Guitar. If you found it helpful or informative, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And please hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and I will attempt to answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.